uh, I need a trustworthy, reliable person who will remind me to record every lecture because this, oh, I gotta stay behind you, because this course is being uh, taught in person and online. And we're gonna record it because not everybody can be here at 4.30. So we're gonna record everyone. And I could forget, see the gray beard? I could easily forget. Uh, so anybody wanna take that responsibility? We need a person, I'll make me pick somebody. Come on. You got it? Okay, you got it? Push. Oh, what's your question? Thank you for volunteering. Is like a Zoom link on Blackboard? Yes. We'll talk about that shortly. Okay. Somebody who's gonna be, you wanna do it? Thank you, sir. Okay. Just slap me upside the head and say, hey, you old fart. Remember to record this every time. Okay, so we're on it. We got a volunteer. What's your name, please? Jordan. Jordan. Okay, Jordan, it's your responsibility. Okay. Well, hi, I'm Ken Williams, uh, as it says. I've been here for a long time. Uh, and I'm here to teach this class. I've been teaching, oh, one or two classes a semester or not for the last few years since I retired. Uh, I'm not very good at retiring. Uh, I've been programming for a long time and I'm old. I'm not old like your parents. I'm old like your grandparents. So, uh, so uh, teaching the secret class, so what do I know about secret? Yeah, not too much, but I try. Uh, I'm a chapter ahead, so I've actually taught this class before, uh, a couple, I think three times before, um, changed it around every time, uh, other security classes. I have some of you, some of you, foolish as you may be, have taken my classes before, and you're back for gluttons for punishment. Uh, let's see, I actually did have a job once long ago. I worked as a staff member at Michigan Tech, and I was in charge of computer security that time, moving we on nab people who are trying to break into the system. And uh, one of them was even expelled. I didn't expect that. We dragged him into the dean of students. And he said, okay, you're out. Uh, okay, and yes, even did some hacking of my own. Ethically, ethically, we'll talk about that. Okay, uh, what are we doing here? Uh, we are gonna try to teach cybersecurity. Now, theory and the book is kind of theoretical, but I tend to like to do more practical stuff. So we're gonna mix the theoretical and the practical and see if that can do. I also note that you can be a good hacker in this class. That's not the goal. The goal is not to teach to be a hacker. Allah. Definitive. Yes. Oh, oh. oh, don't have to go out there and silence everybody. Uh, get to that. Okay. What do I wanna get out of this class? These are the learning objectives, the student learning outcomes. You know, all classes have to have these things. Uh, and uh, yes, so I've got three of them. You can see what they are. We want a secure system against common threats. Because in general, most of the security problems are known problems. People didn't protect themselves against a problem that's been known for several years. And therefore, uh, they fell into that problem. Uh, we want to be able to avoid, you know, develop software that avoids those known threats and also make sure that you use systems in a way that doesn't release information or compromise the information. Uh, 620 happens to be a core class for the uh, certificate in cybersecurity. Uh, now, so that tells me that it's sort of a basic level first time security class. So that's what I'm viewing it as, as a overview of security, a broad coverage of security, You're not going into terrible depth and things. You wanna know web security, take the web security class. You wanna know network security, take the network security class. If you wanna know a little bit about all the security stuff I can think of, this is the class for you. Uh, I might also point out, we'll get to online and off, we'll get to this in-person online thing in just a minute. But the university on the website says, if you're into the certificate thing, it's only available online. If you like to be in person, you're welcome to come and sit here in person. If you are in person and you can't stand talk, listening to me, and you'd rather sit at home and do it where you can pause me and stuff like that, you can do that too. We'll get around to that in more detail. Uh, okay, topics. I have a whole bunch of topics. We may or may not cover all these topics, and I may think of something else, but this is sort of 
what I'm thinking of covering. I've been working on this for the last week or two since I knew I was gonna teach this class, which has only been a week or two. So I didn't get a chance to read the whole book, it's big, uh, but I will, uh, working on it. The, the class schedule is not complete. It's almost complete, but not complete. Hopefully if all goes well, it'll be complete by Monday. Uh, that's what I'm Okay. So I told you what I want to get done with this class. Anybody have other ideas? Is there something you want to get out of it? Is it your class? Anybody want something better, different? How about, yeah, oh yes. An A, he wants an A. Hey, let me talk to you in just a minute about how to get that A. It shouldn't be that hard. Anybody in the online world? Uh, yeah, I have one. Um... Uh, I guess just exploring if cybersecurity is a good kind of concentration to be in and what work in the cybersecurity field is going to be like. Well, there's lots of jobs in the cybersecurity field. That's a, that's a plus. Uh, yeah, so uh, if you get moderately good at this, get good grades and uh, you can go out and find lots of cybersecurity jobs. Some of you, well, okay, some people may have had there's a scholarship the uh, Cyber Defender Scholarship here at a and that requires you to go work for the government. Uh, we've had that for a dozen years or more. And a lot of people have gone out into government and got jobs and most of them are still there. Uh, so there's government, industry, a lot of opportunities for jobs. Also, no matter where you do, if you're gonna go into the computing field, you're gonna have to take care of computer security. You might not be there to be a computer security expert, but if you don't, pay some attention to computer security, they're gonna get you. So you wanna watch out. Uh, any, oh, any more questions about, uh, I can do this. oh, about goals and, and what you wanna cover? Hope I answered the question. Um, yes. Oh, yes. That, oh, yeah, it's a big encryption. Cryptography is a big topic. It's probably, as far as time consumed, it's probably the longest time consumed on, on cryptography. Yeah. Um, I came here earlier this morning to extend my laptop loan. But I didn't get any email notification on like before, so I don't know if it's the new system now or probably yeah. So it gave me already, but I didn't get a an email notification for that because. We pre do check it out. Um, actually, Great question. I kind of got like lost there. The summer. It, yeah, because of. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Make sure everybody out yeah, there on yeah, the online the world is, to mute yourself. I, I have a regular contract which ended us this weekend, and the, the job was. Hey, to mute yourself, bro. Mute yourself for the new semester. Yeah, contract. No, I mean. I don't um, think he's listening. and the graduate school. Emmanuel, would you put yourself on mute, please? Thank you. Okay. Moving on. Oh, fire away. Along with that cryptography, are we going to be talking about the insecurities that come along with cryptography when it comes to quantum computing? To, oh, quantum computing? Yes, I have a slide or two on quantum computing, but you won't like it. Okay. okay. Uh, all right. This is both an online and an on campus class. There's two different sections. Uh, there are 31 people in the online section and Supposed to be 15 people uh, in here. Um, oh, okay, two people got lost. But I, I scared a few away earlier today. Well, yes, this is class intended for graduate students. Uh, okay. Well, you can be a senior. I, somebody was a sophomore and asked if I should take this class. I said, maybe not. Okay, uh, yes, so this is gonna be an online class with a live studio audience. Uh, we're gonna, uh, we're recording this. So uh, you can watch it later on because several people told me they cannot do this at 4.30. They're taking an online class and 
It didn't say in the beginning it's going to be at 4:30. Uh, so I'm recording it, and they can watch it later. So if you're sitting here and you don't and you can't get there at 4:30, I'm going to try to record it. If he reminds me to record it every time, so so he's got it on the job. Okay, so we do it. Oh, and just so I can tell you, I told you so the first day of class, November 14th and November 16th, which is the week before Thanksgiving, it will be online only. Broadcast from Hilton Head, if all goes well. Hey, got those reservations in a long time ago before he told me I was going to teach this class. I'm not going to change them. All right, uh, office hours or student hours. Uh, in fact, we're all supposed to have office hours where you can show up without making an appointment. Yeah, I've been doing this for 30 years. Students don't show up to office hours. Oh, the guys who are going to get an A, uh, she'll show up for she'll show up for office hours. But the people who need to show up for office hours, they don't usually show up. But so I will have office hours. Also, I don't have an office. I'm just this officeless faculty member preparing his lectures under some overpass someplace. Uh, but so if you want to meet with me, email me, call me. We can. Communicate by email, by phone, we can do Zoom meetings. Uh, just let me know and we'll get together somehow. Or I can meet, you know, on campus someplace. But I have found just sitting there waiting for students to show up is kind of a waste of my time because the students don't show up on a regular basis. Uh, if this doesn't work, let me know. If somebody wants to see me on a regular basis, we can do that. We'll make it work. But for now, I'm not going to reserve his time because Whatever time I pick isn't going to work for everybody anyway. All right. Uh, website. Okay. Got to use Blackboard. You should know that by now. Use Blackboard. My class website, which is right here, uh, is not connected at the moment. Uh, I'm waiting for the university to pull it together and say it's safe for me to connect my website to the network. Uh, they had a big attack last fall and they panicked and shut off everything. That's Rule number one for security, the safest computer is one that you turn off. And I think the folks at A&T's uh, information technology decided that was the solution. Just turn off everything and it will be safe. Yeah, well, sorry, editorial opinion. Uh, okay, I got an email. You should know by now it's Williams at eight and Kat at eight. There are, last check, there are 39 Williamses working for the university. I am just Williams. I was here first. Oh, textbook, yeah, there's been a big issue about the textbook. Uh, there are two possible textbooks. Uh, I would like to have the second edition, but some people are getting the first edition. It doesn't matter. If you look in the preface of the second edition, it tells you what do they change from there to the first edition. Not a lot. Not much that we will that we really care about. A few definitions, a few examples. They add a few chapters. If I avoid those chapters, nobody will notice. Uh, so if I identify a chapter, I'll try to give you the title of the chapter too. So it's just not a number because the numbers may got have been adjusted. Okay, so this is a textbook. Uh, remember that A&T paying for textbooks. So you should get yourself one. I understand that people, most of you don't have one. I've also been told that the bookstore is starting to hand them out. So you might get one in the next few days. If you get your textbook, let me know. So I'll know if we're getting them otherwise. I'll find alternate reading material or, yeah, or maybe I'll put the PDF out of the line or something like that so you can read it. Okay, so we'll work on that. Uh, as I said, graduate course, according to university rules, you can take this if you're a senior with a good GPA. Uh, we're gonna require some programming. You have to be able to program in some language. How many, anybody here does not know either Java or C or C++? Oh, none of the above? No. Do you know any programming languages? Oh, okay. This is not a programming class. But I kind of thought I'd throw a few programming assignments out there to, you know, you to do things. We'll see how it works. Yeah. I mean, that's nothing. Nothing, nothing. Huh? Um, if, my, I'm familiar with uh, or I think programming SQL. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. That's part of it. Well, we want to talk about database security. That will help you. Uh, okay. I don't plan to do a lot of programming. This isn't a programming class, but there may be a little bit because I like to do things, to learn by doing. And so we'll try that. Uh, yes. No, whatever works. Yeah, you know, any, any programming language that works is fine. 
uh, yeah. Some of them I have some background methods, functions I've written to help make it easier. And so if it's not Java, C or C++, I may not have it, but you can always write it yourself. Uh, give, you this, give you the other versions and you can translate it to whatever language you like. Uh, grades, yes, that's what everybody wants to know. How do you get an A in this class? Okay, uh, there'll be assignments uh, in this class and uh, the sum of all the assignments, throwing out the lowest one, so everybody gets to you know, screw up on one or not get it done or whatever that is. And we average the rest of them and that is 16% of your grade. Uh, one of the assignments would be a paper. Uh, unlike some previous versions of this class, I know when Dr. Anwar teaches it, paper is a big part of the, the assignment. I mean, he, he's into, well, part of his purpose is to teach you to write research papers. It's not my goal. Uh, I mean, you have to do that, but you have to write at least a paper. So I don't want you to write a big paper. There's 46 students in this class. If everybody wrote a 10 page paper, that's 460 pages that I have to read. That's a big book. And it's easy when, you know, many of you write reasonably well and, you know, cover the topic, but there's always those people who slaughter the English language and put a bunch of words that don't make any sense at all. And I have to read that too. Uh, so there are be three exams during the semester, or midterms. I'm not sure that three qualifies as midterms, but they could be quarters. Uh, and then a final. Uh, the final, all the, all the exams count 20% of you. So most of this class is the exams. Uh, rating scale, there you go. The, ooh, that didn't come out nicely colored like, it, like I drew it. Uh, okay, anyway, A's, you can go down to 87. This is not public school system. The Guilford County public school system, uh, 93 and above is an A. Well, how many times do you get 93 and above percent right on anything? Nah, that doesn't happen. So we're going to so get basically 85 and above and get an A of some type. Uh, and then B's, a lot, of, a lot of room for C's. You've got like between 60 and 75 for a C. Oh, uh, if you're a graduate student, there are no C minuses, D pluses or D's. Right below a C, you drop to F. So yeah, so try to avoid that. You really don't want to flunk a graduate class if you're a graduate student. It's really hard to recover. Uh, do the arithmetic if you get an F in a graduate class. You have to get like A's in every other class to get up, to end up with a 3.0 average which you need to graduate. So if you flunk a class, your goose is cooked. Uh, try to avoid that. I'm sad to say I have flunked at least a graduate student before, but. He tried really hard to flunk. Uh, okay, the final exam. Final exam is on Monday, December 5th at five o'clock. That's the first day of final exam week. Uh, that is not what would be normally scheduled for this class. This class meets at 4.30 and there are hourly divisions for exam times. I'm supposed to say the, uh, it should start at the four o'clock time. Well, the four o'clock time, it's December 9th, Friday at four o'clock. The very last slot on the very last day of final exam week. Does anybody want to stay around for the very last time and have more time to study? I don't, I don't even intend to be in town. It's my goal to be in San Francisco running cross country race, but uh, that's what I'm doing on it. So, so I moved it. And nobody, it shouldn't conflict with anybody because in order to be conflict, you'd have to have a class that meets from five to six o'clock on uh, Mondays. But you can't because you're here. So I don't think it should bother anybody. I mean, if this really upsets you, let me know and we'll figure out something. But I'm moving the final exam to Monday instead of Friday. And I think most people would rather get, get it over with and get out of here as opposed to waiting to the last time for the last day. Awesome. It doesn't give you much time to grade this thing. Throw it down the stairs. Uh, okay. Uh, because most people are online, all the exams will be online, including the people who are taking the on-campus class will be online. Uh, and some of my exams, if I can do what I've done in the past, there's only, only one student is taking my Comp uh, 621 class, which has 
Chapter stealing some of the material from 621 to this. Uh, some of you took 725, but I'm not going to do a lot of 725 stuff, which is web security. But uh, yes, and I have some websites. Well, when I get the website working, uh, we'll be attacking the website. So some of it is log in to the website and do something uh, nefarious. And if you can, it'll say good for you, and you get a, and you score on that one. Otherwise, you don't score on it. Uh, I usually give you lots of time to do the exams. Yeah, the exam, I do not say the exam is just an hour. Usually I give people all day to do the exam. Like I'll put it out on the website at 6 a.m. in the morning, you have till midnight, so it's 18 hours. It should not take you 18 hours to do it. I expect it takes you an hour or two, but you can do it anytime because some people have time constraints. You know, you can't do it at this time. So you got all the day to do it, fine. Uh, of course, because they're online exams, they are open book open notes, open web. The thing that you can't do that I feel is cheating, and maybe you disagree, but I think calling up somebody or talking to somebody else, you know, what if you, you know, call up Mary and say, well, what, did you get, what did you get for question three? I think that's cheating. So no, no, that, but you can go out and look in the web or look in the notes. You can call up Fred and say, where did you read to help you with question three? That's okay. It's close, but, but if you ask somebody for the answer, that's wrong. If you ask them where might you find the answer, that's okay because I'm going to make up these questions and the answer itself will probably not be on the web. Yeah, I've learned long enough that one of the first things you do when you like make programming assignments or questions is you try to Google it, see if you can find it on Google. If you can't find it on Google, then you're safe. Okay. All right. Uh, purpose of the assignments are to learn material. If you wait long, too long to learn the material, then it's, it's not of any value. So once you turn it in, I'm going to give you plenty of time, usually a week to do anything. So once you turn it on time, uh, I start taking off lots of points if you don't. Now, if you have a valid excuse, if you're sick or you went off to get a job or something like that, sure. Hey, I'm loose. We can work with you on that. No problem. But if you just didn't feel like doing it, ah, then I'm going to take off. Of course, remember you get to miss one, so that's okay. The thing I'm not going to do, I'm not going to take a bunch of assignments at the end of the semester. I'm not going to let you turn in a whole pile of assignments at the end of the semester. I just don't want that shit. I am tired of it, so we're not going to do that. Okay, uh, Americans, this, this the university request that I show you this. Uh, well, important point here is that. Accommodations and modifications cannot be performed retroactively. All right, so that's the, the legal aspect, but I will give you my promise, stronger than this, that I will do all I can to meet any accommodations that you inform me of. So I promise you I'll do whatever I can. That's more important. Okay, attendance. Uh, as we know, it's online. Some people cannot be here at 435.45. That's okay. Uh, and you're adults, if you can't make it, I assume you have more important things to do. You know, children get sick or whatever that happens. Uh, but uh, also because you're adults, take it to class, you should look at the lectures. Uh, if you can't be here, look at them online. Uh, every now and again, I will introduce material that will not be in the textbook. I'll try to point that out. Uh, and you're required for all the material, you know, the, the exams we made up of the material we covered in the lectures. There will be no secret material to, I didn't cover. Uh, lectures will be available on Blackboard, uh, probably actually on YouTube. Um, students seem to like reading it on YouTube better. I, YouTube, it's all the resources in the world, uh, and they can they can do the videos fine. They they do it well. Everybody you know everybody watches videos in YouTube, so I'm going to put it on my YouTube channel, and you can watch it there. And I'll have links from Blackboard you can click on to find it on YouTube. So probably do that. I think it works better than putting it on some of the other web video facilities that are here. Okay. Oh, and again, because you because I'm not requiring attendance, nothing we do during the lecture will ever be graded. There will be questions. Starting probably Monday, I'll be having questions, uh, multiple choice questions for both on campus people and for uh, Zoom people, and I'll we'll go over the details of how we're doing that later. But I got plans. Uh, okay, Attend 
I have this little graph here. This is actual grades from a previous class of mine. Uh, and you might, this is attendance, attendance score in this particular class, I allowed them to miss up to three classes and still got a score of 100 on attendance. So it doesn't mean they were 100% of the time, it just means they were at least you know, 95% of the time, most, all but three classes. And you might note that everybody who got an A was there at 100% for attendance. And everybody who got an F had really bad attendance. No, I don't know if one's a cause of the other, but at least I should hope that attending the class does not degrade your grade. Hopefully listening to me doesn't ruin your performance. So at least we're gonna hope it's not bad. So you should attend classes. Uh, yeah, I think we somebody mentioned this. Let's, if you're on the online folks, let's mute yourself unless you have something to say. I've got a, I think I have it set. So everybody should be muted when you start. You can unmute yourself. I can also mute you. Uh, and of course, cell phones, oh yes. Cell phones should be silenced whenever you're using them. Uh, right, yes. Uh, da, 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 da. Uh, there, now it's silent. But don't worry, I'm, I'm old, I have hearing aids now, and if it rings, it rings only in my ears and you don't hear it. That's kind of cool. Uh, okay, cheating, I think we mentioned uh, copying other people on exams is cheating. Uh, we're just going to follow the College of Engineering's academic integrity statement. It's easy. If you cheat on a assignment, on an assignment, there's no, well, there's no lab at home. This is just assignments here. Uh, you get a zero on the assignment. If you cheat a second time, I mean, if you get caught twice, you're not any good at cheating and you just deserve the flunk. Uh, or, and if also if you cheat on an exam, you flunk. The same. But actually, what I do is I, I just throw it to the College of Engineering and Academic Integrity Board or something and say, I've caught this person cheating twice, do what you want with them. You put their head on a stick or something, I don't know, whatever. Uh, it's usually not a bit of graduate class, it's rarely a problem. And most of the problems I have is two people who are working together on an assignment and they say, oh yeah, you know, Fred and I will work on that assignment together. Uh, but if you do, that's great. Study with a buddy is fantastic. Just don't copy, don't turn in the same thing because it looks like every now and again, we will do teamwork so you can go uh, Yes, I'm gonna to try to start this class at 4.30, which doesn't matter at all to the online people who can watch it, uh, watch the videos, but we're gonna to try to start it at 4.30. So if you're trying to do it live, it is at 4.30 and yeah. Uh, oh yes, 4.30, uh, this overlaps with ASL. Sorry, if that is a problem for you, let me know and we'll figure it out. Okay. We're gonna to try to follow the syllabus and the schedule right now. There is no schedule in the syllabus. Well, I have the exam dates down. I've got the holidays down. I don't, I, it says introduction on the first day after that. The syllabus I got published is not, doesn't have it, but I'm working on it. I've got 21 of the, I have only three more, I have three or four more days to figure out and then I'll have it done. Okay, any questions about the syllabus stuff? Uh, if not, let's talk about, go away. Let's talk computer security. Uh, yeah. Okay. Hopefully you can see that online, introduction to computer security. All right. Well, what is computer security? I went out to Wikipedia and uh, copy that down. You notice, by the way, the little reference in the right-hand corner? Uh, yes, we talk about writing papers. Citing your sources is always important. It's never a problem to cite your sources. If you have you know, the textbook, the textbook has a couple thousand sources in the back, and the reference is huge. That's not a problem. It makes it look like you did lots of research, even if you never read this book. Uh, but if you don't do it, it's plagiarism. So, you know, there's never a reason not to cite your, your sources. Uh, so make sure you do it. Anyway, as you can see, this is what Wikipedia thinks computer security is. We will go into much more detail, probably on Monday, under what is computer security? How do we define it? How do we define when there's been a breach? Uh, try to use some format, formalisms in it and then try to do some real world stuff. Uh, yes, now, who's out there trying to get us? Who are the bad guys? Uh, once upon a time, 
they're used to the bad guys with this you know, uh, kid, you know, uh, high school kid trying to do things. Well, that's not the case anymore. Uh, it's people doing it for money, for fun and profit. Uh, yes, there's money to be had. I am not telling you this is what you should do. You should not try to do this. People go to jail for this sort of stuff. But this is what people are doing. And most of the time, people who are hacking into your systems have a financial motive to do so. They want to steal information, such as credit card numbers that they can steal, uh, all sorts of stuff. Extortion, uh, ransomware. Uh, you know, extortion people ask for lots of money. Uh, and sometimes there's they want uh, to get a what's called a bot farm or a, get lots of computers who have been compromised and will execute commands when they ask if they have lots of computers that will do something they want to. If you're doing a distributed denial of service attack, you need to corrupt a lot of uh, computers and then uh, at the appropriate time have all of these computers attack the victim. Uh, and of course, some people want to you know, look at information or change information that they'd like to change your bank account or maybe your grades. Uh, okay, so uh, that's what they're trying to do. There are, of course, professional fees. There are all sorts of people, and you can kind of rank their threat level. Uh, one, of course, is the ordinary Joe six pack out there cruising the web. If you haven't protected your information from him, then you're not protected at all. And there are places where doing nothing more than following around. Uh, Links you can get the information that I don't think the company wanted to make public, but somebody screwed up and put it there. Uh, okay. And then there's sophisticated users, which might be you, computer science students, uh, the people who know something about how the system works. Uh, and then, of course, as you mentioned, professional thieves, people trying to do it for profit. Uh, another threat is insiders. Insiders are people who work for the company or even worse, just recently worked for the company. Disgruntled employees are a real threat. If you have to let uh, Fred go uh, because she's not doing the job, Fred may know a lot about how the system works. He may know a lot of passwords. I mean, it's, it's known now that as soon as you fire somebody, you immediately, before they're out the door, uh, disable their user ID and passwords and any other change any other passwords they may have known uh, because they may be unhappy and they may hurt. So watch out for them. Of course, in those corporates, corporations have a lot of money and may want to spend a lot of effort. You know, Acme widgets may want to know the plans of algamated widgets. And so they may hire one of those professional thieves to find out. Uh, and then there's governments. Uh, yes. Federal government has more money than God, I figure. They have lots of money. They have a tremendous amount of resources and they can throw a lot of resources at a problem. Uh, the National Security Agency's budget, I think is $34 billion. So if they want to throw some resources at a problem, they've got resources. If it takes a lot of computing power, they can buy it. Uh, and so they can, uh, do a lot. So yes, and um, there's a quote by uh, Snyder. It says the two types of security, two types of encryption. One that will keep your uh, sister out of your diary, and the other one that will keep the government out of it. Yes. So, uh, if you're trying to keep the government out of your stuff, it's going to take a lot more effort. Okay. Uh, yes, and of course, cyber war is real. People are doing it. Are doing it now. Uh, Apparently, so I read in the news, the Russians have attacked uh, the Ukrainian uh, infrastructure to see what they can damage they can do. Apparently they did some damage before they physically <clears throat> stepped across the line and did anything in the real world, they did things in the virtual world. Uh, and obviously with all sorts of things controlled to some extent by computers, if you could go out there and really damage things. Uh, an example would be the Colonial Pipeline, which by the way is here in Greensboro. Uh, if you ever look at a pipeline map, Greensboro is kind of a hub for a lot of things in the East Coast. Uh, pipes running underground uh, and back, uh, back a year and a half ago or so, uh, uh, there was a ransomware attack on Colonial Pipeline and 
uh, was reported in the news by uh, Russian criminals, not necessarily the Russian government, by criminals that were in Russia, and therefore they're hard to hard to find and hard to get. Uh, that they did a ransomware attack and asked for a lot of money to make it all work again. Actually, they attacked the corporate web, the corporate computers, and not necessarily the machines that run the pipes, but the colonial pipeline was very concerned there was a cross between there. And they thought that if they messed up the pipeline control system, they could cause real damage. Uh, and there have been a real attacks, uh, big one, I guess they call called Web War One. Uh, is it back, oh, what is that? Six, uh, 16 years ago? Yes, uh, back in 2007. Uh, folks in Estonia made uh, the Russians upset, and so the Russians attacked them. Now, uh, Estonia was way ahead of other people in having things online. Turns out the United States is not a very cyber developed country. There are a lot of countries that are much more organized than we are as far as cyber systems. Uh, uh, Yes, you can file your taxes online. It's gonna be easier soon, according to the, the new so-called Inflation Reduction Act. Uh, but uh, a lot of countries have much, you know, you have to go to the DMV to get licenses. You don't have to in most countries, you do it online. Uh, and Estonia was leading the country until you hit them. Uh, they did go back though, and uh, in May of 2008, create the Cooperative Cyber Defense Center of Excellence in uh, Estonia. Uh, and they're now probably one of the strongest protected systems. Uh, for a lot of government agencies, I have uh, a pamphlet on, I should have brought the pamphlet on government agencies to fold out. It folds right out because I have, it lists 14 government agencies responsible for cybersecurity or def cyber you know, defense in some kind. There are all sorts of them out there. And it lists 14, who knows, there may be some they don't tell you about. Uh, but uh, the big ones, of course, the National Institute of Standards and Technology, uh, Homeland Security, uh, CERT. There's a couple of CERTs in there. The one I see most of the time is US CERT. Uh, they send me email about every other day uh, telling me that there's a problem someplace. Uh, uh, there's lots of them out there, lots of uh, cyber command. Yeah, and those of you who are required to work for the federal government upon graduation, Lots of opportunities. Actually, we have lots of people working for the Sergeant at Arms Office for the US Senate, which keeps things safe for senators and congressmen. When you think about it, yes, they need to be safe and they are not advanced users. Okay, what are we trying to accomplish here? Uh, there are uh, usually CIA, confidentially, Confidentiality, integrity, and availability. Well, the three you read about in most books. <clears throat> I added a few more A's at the end because they're important. So uh, let me go over all these. Uh, confidentiality. Hey, we're trying to keep people from seeing the data. We want to, if we have data we want or we are required to keep secret. We need to do that. Uh, there are requirements for health information. So there's the HIPAA laws, and I don't even remember what HIPAA stands for. Health Information Privacy da, 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 Act, uh, Privacy Protection Act, I think. How about the Health Information Privacy Protection Act, HIPAA. Uh, and it requires uh, health organizations, doctors, office hospitals, insurance companies to keep the information private and not allow it to be released to unauthorized people. Uh, so uh, it's required. So they have to make sure it's confidential, not let other people see it. Uh, now this is a solution to it. It's hiding your information. I don't. I probably shouldn't have put this one in here because it talks about a solution. Uh, security through obscurity is not a good solution. Just there are ways. Sometimes you can hide things intentionally with organization, but uh, just hoping they won't find it is not a good solution. Okay, so that's confidential. I will go over these in much more detail uh, throughout the semester. Integrity means keep, keep you from changing your data, making sure that you. Data is valid. That if it's transmitted from one source to another, that they get it without it being modified. If the information you have is correct, also the origin is important. Where did this data come from? 
Did this really come from where you think it comes from? If you're gonna run this app that you think comes from acme.com and you trust acme.com, did it really come from them? Or did somebody else modify it and make you think it comes from acme.com? That's an important issue. And then availability. Uh, if somebody crashes your system, then they've compromised the availability uh, and others cannot use it. You cannot use it. Uh, there's all sorts of ways that can be done. Uh, not to mention, by the way, things break. Your computer will break. It's not a matter of will, if it will or not, it's a matter of when. Uh, it will break. So you have to be prepared against the natural disasters. In addition to uh, the intentional malicious activity against your data, natural disasters are important. And in fact, it turns out that the natural uh, disasters are more likely to destroy your data than our malicious disasters. Natural ones occur more often, thank goodness. Uh, and then there's the human factors, the oops factor, like you press that button and just milliseconds after you press that button, you realize, oh, I shouldn't have done that. Uh, and that, that's, that's, that ranks pretty high in the percentage of data loss. Okay, authentication. Authentication is validating who you are uh, because most of the security systems, you want to release information only to authorize people. We don't care. Who are you? Are you really who you think, who you say you are? I mean, yeah. Uh, if somebody walks into class, if you've been in your class all semester, I kind of have an idea that's really you. Or maybe it's your, your evil twin. But uh, to authorize, authenticate yourself to computers is important. People are using passwords for years. Passwords are not real reliable. They're easy to fake, easy to guess. If you want to guess one, two, three, four, five, six, it's a pretty good guess. In fact, it turns out that the 10 most popular passwords in many systems account for 50% of the passwords, which means that if you guess just 10 times, you have a 50-50 chance of getting in. So uh, yeah, so we'll talk about that. Authorization. Authorization is different than authentication. Authentication is trying to validate who you are. Authorization is not only who you are, what are you allowed to do? And making sure that the system does what you are allowed to do and not allow you to do things, not allow it to do things that you're not allowed to do. And of course, that gets complicated as you might authorize other people to do things at different times, locations, you know, can you do things? Uh, there are systems on, we have here at a and that you can only access them on campus. They won't run if you do them off campus. Uh, yes, so if I try to access certain administrative systems from home, it tells me, nope, cannot do that. And maybe if you try, if you try to be, uh, want to keep things private to some extent. I mean, people's concern about privacy varies widely. I did a study a few years ago and I was studying was particularly oriented towards location privacy. And we asked a whole bunch of questions. And one of the questions I asked was age, just to kind of value. It turns out age correlated very strongly to concern about location privacy, that people who were uh, 20, about 20 years old didn't care. If you were 60 years old, you cared a lot. So some of us care, some of us don't. That's a personal issue. Uh, you may or may not want information. You may have information that you don't want released. You may have things that you think you're keeping private that you don't want released publicly. This is interesting. You go out to the website, go to just samsung.com slash privacy and look at the privacy statement. They always tell you, you know, you can see the privacy statement. Some of us widows go out and actually look at it. It says, but I copied this. They can track of contact, name, email address, uh, mailing address, phone number, date of birth, gender, uh, your passwords, uh, information you store, your photos, your contacts, your texts, your, what, where you click, where you've been. That's their privacy statement. This says, use your services, including the click stream data, that is where you've been clicking, interactions with the services, where you, web services you've gone to, where you looked at, are all available to Samsung. That's their privacy statement. I don't know how they could make it less private. I can't think of what they could do to make it less private. They're following everything. So 
if you have pictures of you and your special friend that maybe you don't want everybody in the world to see, remember, they're watching. Uh, I don't have an Apple phone. I haven't looked at what Apple does, but I believe Apple's a little bit more secure. They've been in the news before about not releasing information, so I don't know. Anybody look at the, ever look at the Apple uh, privacy statement? Nobody, everybody clicks on the little website that says, check the boxes. I've read the you know, terms of service in the privacy statement. Of course, nobody has. Some of those weirdos do read those. Uh, nobody's read that. Anybody say anything about privacy on, web, on Apple phones? Oh, I'll have to go out and look now. I'll find their website and read it, but hopefully they're more private. They can't be less private. I can't think of anything they could do to be less private. So some people are cool. Okay. Uh, security costs. Uh, it takes effort to put security in the system. It may require extra hardware. Uh, you've got all sorts of managers and uh, software developers who are trying to make the system secure. You hire security experts to do this. And then of course, there's user convenience. It's a lot easier if you just open up your computer and it pops open and you can use it. Uh, you know, nobody likes to log in. No one wants to log in and then get your phone out and say, yes, it's okay, it's really me. And that sort of stuff, it's kind of inconvenient. Uh, but there is a risk to not doing that. Now, uh, you can make your computer more difficult to get into. Uh, and as you add extra layers of security, you make it more difficult to defeat. The goal is to make it so it's so difficult to defeat that the cost of the data you're protecting uh, is not as expensive as the cost of breaking in. Once it costs more to break in than the data is worth, then I think you can see so you're probably secure because no one's going to bother. There is, of course, nothing is absolutely secure. I mean, you know, you've got your federal government trying to get in. It's going to be hard to keep it secret, but you can make it difficult. You can, man, you can make it difficult for people to get into. And if you make it difficult, the attackers just might go someplace else. Uh, yeah, I remember long ago going to a community meeting with the police about keeping your house secure. And they point out the burglars are not like the guys on television. These are, these are you know, bums who are just trying to break in. They check the windows, check the doors. If they can't get in, they go next door and try somebody else. Because they don't know how to pick the locks. They're not very good at this stuff. Uh, so you want to uh, just make it difficult. The more difficult it is, the more likely they will not get in. The more likely they'll just go someplace else. Uh, uh, some people talk about a war between the good guys and the bad guys. Uh, yes, you know, every time we find a problem, we patch it. It's called catch and patch. Uh, you wait for some problem to occur and you try and try to fix it. Well, there are better ways to do it. We'll talk about possibly better ways. Uh, attacking systems is now. You know, a commodity. People, you know, people who are good at attacking systems have produced these kits, systems that you can use to attack other people. Uh, ransomware as a service, R A A S. Uh, so you don't have to know how to do it. You can just buy the kit and uh, and do that. You don't even have to have the data. What, what you do is you go out from one set of people and you buy the software to attack. Now you may need some information, you may need passwords and stuff. Well, you go out to somebody else who's been doing some phishing and they've had the passwords. So you go here, you buy your passwords, over here, you buy your attack software, put them together and you're in without having to know hardly anything about this. Uh, and you know, you, the people you attack may sell it to you for a fixed price. They may want a piece of the action, but uh, yes. So, it's becoming easier and easier for people who know almost nothing about computers to go out there and commit major cybersecurity attacks. Okay, how do they do these attacks? There are various ways. Uh, oh yes, <laughs> come in four forms and then I list five. All right, uh, textbook has four. I had four, I could have mixed them, mashed them together. Uh, yes, so the textbook has these. Actually, I had, I had the four. And then I went out, read the textbook and it had four, almost the same four. So I kind of merged them together to have five. It kind of says four, but so these are the big ones. Anyway, interception. 
That is, they, if you're transmitting the information around, they find it somehow. Wiretap, go back to that website, to that phone uh, slide. Anyway, so, uh, and again, authorized, act, unauthorized access, tampering it. Uh, fabrication, that means either uh, trying to impersonate, masquerade somebody as someone else, or creating data that is not of the correct origin. Denial of service or delay. Uh, if you delay transmissions of information or delay a system, you may be able to actually do all sorts of attacks. We'll talk about that later. Even if you can't stop it, if you delay it, that's good enough. And repudiation. What that means uh, is if you send somebody some information and they have received it, they should not be able to deny that they have received it. That, uh, or if they electronically sign a contract, they shouldn't be able to deny that they signed that contract. Uh, okay. How do they do this? Uh, eavesdropping, that's, uh, that picture is hard to see, it's just a pair of alligator clips on a phone line. That used to work, maybe still does. Uh, of course, uh, wireless systems, we're on wireless. The information is broadcast everywhere, anybody can pick it up. Uh, message tramp, message tampering, that's like eavesdropping, but as you get it, you change it and send it on. So people think it came from where they does, but it's been changed. Masquerading again, that's, uh, either sending invalid messages, it's kind of like message tampering, but change, or just uh, indicating that you are somebody who you are not. And then invalid input, that's a big one. Invalid input causes a lot of problems. We'll talk about that in detail. Replay, that's an important one to remember. Replay is uh, recording information as it goes across the network and then sending it again. So imagine you are going to log in and you send in your user ID and password. Uh, Depending on how the encryption works, I may be able to record that message. I don't, I can't decrypt it. I don't know what your user ID and password are. But I know in the beginning the system asks for user ID and password, and I've recorded your response. If I play back your response, which will send your user ID and password. Can I log in as you? Well, sometimes yes. Okay, there's password guessing, crashing systems, many ways to do that. Fault in password guessing. And then there's all the zoo of viruses, worms, Trojan horses, all sorts of things like that that you can use to attack it. To defend against it, you need all sorts of defenses, overlapping defenses. Don't just rely on one thing because there's lots of ways they can attack. Uh, and they usually mention prevention, detection, and response. Prevention is, of course, what you want to start with. You want to make the system hard to attack. And if they manage to get in, you want to detect uh, suspicious activity. Sometimes it's not always necessary they got in, but is your system under attack? Are people trying to do things? Uh, even if they haven't got in, are they trying to get in? It's worthwhile knowing that someone's uh, trying to jimmy the lock. Uh, so that's worthwhile. A response, well, okay, if you've recognized something's wrong or actually if something's happened, what do you do about it? If there's been, a compromise of your system, what actions should, should you take? Uh, okay. Uh, and it's a mixture of better people process and technologies. Uh, if your systems are ISO certified, that usually means you have lots of documentation and processes and procedures on how to handle things. Uh, you gotta make sure people are trained. Training is very important. And one of the ideas here is uh, some data you can't access by yourself it requires two people to access it. So anytime you want to open up, say an important file, uh, both you and your supervisor have to enter their password to send them to uh, That's important because you, individual users often make bad decisions. As you can see that this is computer killer, lock, unlock. Well, most of the time people will just click the okay button, just let it go because if you don't do that, it doesn't work. So they have to click the OK button. So if it comes up and says, this is going to destroy your system. Format the C drive. OK. Uh, and yeah. So when people click OK, even though it's not in their best interest. Uh, and again, many people have very insecure passwords. So people are not good at maintaining the security. Uh, phishing, I think I've heard about, all probably heard about phishing. It's social engineering attack where 
people send a fraudulent message of some kind asking for you to reveal information that you probably should not reveal. Passwords or any sort of information is done in all sorts of ways. Websites uh, usually starts with a email message with a false uh, source. Uh, get all, oh, I didn't, I, I got one just the other day. I get them all the time. One at a and saying, click here to validate your a and email. Uh, yeah, right. Uh, we'll look at that. It wasn't very official looking. They did not do a good job. We'll talk about how to do a better job. Uh, and so, uh, but there's all over the place. Uh, with apologies to Walt Kelly. Uh, yeah, usually users are their worst security threat. Okay, that's it for today. We got done 20 minutes early. Uh, if you get a textbook, let me know. Let me know if, uh, some people say they've got their textbooks. Now, most of you said you didn't get them, that the bookstores, they were back order. But I've been told that they, they got them, they're coming in, you should receive them. If you do, let me know. So uh, in that case, if you get one, just quickly look through chapter one of the book. And on Monday, we're gonna cover the material in chapter two. Uh, chapter two is only 14 pages long, so it's not, I'm not asking you to do a lot. Uh, and if you, don't, if you don't get the book, I'll find something similar that we can read or put the textbook online or something. That's it. Any questions, statements, uh, explicatives you might mention? Okay, well, that's it then. Uh, we'll see you on Monday uh, and we will stop recording. Uh,